Jason. Jace Hinton, and he's kind of the do all guy. Jace Hinton, Jace, welcome to the ballpark, brother. We started talking like sports, sports, and Jace is on fire. I know. Yo, what is going on, everybody? It's Jace here on the Shoulder to Shoulder podcast. First official, official, wow, words are hard. First official episode. So hyped to have y'all here. And man, can I just say I'm excited to talk Colorado sports, baby. Woo! Um, obviously today we're nearing football season. Um, happy NCAA CFB 25 drop week to those who celebrate this wonderful occasion. Um, speaking of that, I got to get a new Xbox because my Xbox is too old to play the game. So working on that. But nonetheless, super excited to have you all here Uh, today. As you can see below, we're going to talk Big 12 Media Day, new look offensive line, and season predictions. Let's start, though, with the new look Big 12, 16 teams. And I personally, being a Colorado fan, growing up a Colorado fan, as you can see behind me, uh, there's a Colorado helmet here, Colorado flag somewhere over here. Yep. Colorado Jersey on this doll like grew up a diehard CU fan and when I was growing up we were in the Big 12 up until I was about eight when we moved to the Pac-12 and from there it was the Pac-12 and yes I love the Pac-12 and I love the Big 12 but nonetheless happy to be back in the Big 12 playing a lot of those teams the only team that only two, three teams, four teams really, that we won't play from when I was a kid are the obvious ones, Oklahoma, Texas, Texas A&M, and the Knowledge University. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that is Nebraska and Lincoln. I will refer to them as Knowledge University because that's what that N stands for is knowledge. But let's talk Big 12 Media Day. Coach Prime making a splash, talking about how great it is to be in the Big 12 And the Big 12 is going to love Coach Prime because Coach Prime is Coach Prime. Like, there's no way around it. He talked about how he's a brother from Florida, and, you know, he's talking to the whole country about a game that he played when he was a child. Um, So the Big 12 is going to really embrace that. It's going to help Colorado recruiting-wise. Prior to that, obviously, Coach was able to go get guys from Florida, get guys from Texas. But now the recruiting aspect of this is going to be huge because Coach Prime can go out and get those guys from Florida. He can go out and get those guys from Texas and be like, hey, man, we're going to at least make one trip home for you. TCU, Baylor, Texas Tech, and Houston are all in the Texas state of Texas. We play one of those teams at least once in the state of Texas. We're going to talk about season predictions later on. And everybody will attack me during that. I'm going to be realistic as it gets. But Coach Prime is going to be able to recruit those Texas kids. He has an estate in Texas too, which helps out. Now also Florida. He's a Florida guy. He grew up in Florida, went to Florida State. And for him, recruiting out of Florida is going to be a little bit easier, a little bit harder Once you get them on campus, and Coach Prime is alluding to this, once you get them on campus, it's over with. Now, Coach McCartney back in the 90s, he did that a lot, um, was able to get the California kids on campus. And once you get them on campus, take them to Norman, Oklahoma, take them to Lincoln, Nebraska, take them to some of those other places. They're not going to want to go anywhere else. So you get the recruiting aspect. And now Florida, you play Central Florida. You know, Maybe one year you're at home, one year on the road doesn't matter you still get that one trip at least towards that area so that your family can come and watch you and obviously we don't play missouri they're in the sec they were another big 12 team we used to play but we go to iowa state and we go to kansas and so we'll be able to midwest recruit a little bit more kind of like we used to back in the day to help us out but you know coach prime he's been able to get big guys obviously we're still waiting on julian lewis to see what he does I really think Coach Prime can flip him, but that's for another episode. I think that'll be next week's episode where I talk about Julian Lewis and what he does. But Coach Prime 
as you guys, I'm going to be flipping back and forth between screens on what I'm looking at here. So I give you guys the correct information as always. Um, you know, Coach Prime was not able to be at Pac-12 uh, Media Day last year due to health concerns. He was there this year. And, you know, obviously the big two big road games out of the state of Texas is Texas Tech. And then we also have to go to Central Florida. So that refers to the recruiting that I was talking about. Um, he also spoke very highly of Texas Tech head coach Joey McGuire. Um, he coached Bucky Dion Jr., uh, well off media. He coached them, uh, Bucky, during high school. So spoke very highly of Joey McGuire. Um, he spoke very highly on Gus Malzahn, who's the head coach at Central Florida. And he will be one of those players that, one of those coaches that Coach Prime has a good repertoire with because he did recruit Shiloh. He did recruit Shador, or Shador, sorry. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how the uh, Pac-12, or the Big 12 plays. Um, You know, KJ Jefferson, he's at UCF. There was obviously the comment made by, I want to say Skip Bayless, Colin Coward, one of those guys, that they said that they felt that Shador is the best quarterback, not just in the Big 12, but in college football. And then KJ Jefferson printed that out and put that up in his locker and posted something about it. So that game, yeah, that game's going to be, you know, kind of one to watch. You really want to see, you know, the battle between those two guys. It's going to be a great football game. UCF is obviously well coached by Gus. You know, he was great at Auburn with Cam Newton. And Gus also referred to uh, KJ Jefferson as being the closest thing he's had to Cam Newton. Uh, another game that I think we are all going to want to watch is going to be Colorado uh, at home in Boulder, November 29th on ABC against Oklahoma State. Obviously, Ollie Gordon was at Big 12 Media Day, and he had spoke about how he felt that he had to be there for his teammates because he felt that the media would be asking his teammates a lot of questions about him when he could just answer those questions instead. Um, so, you know, Kudos to Ollie Gordon. I think that was the right move for him. Obviously, he made a mistake in life. He is a college kid. I mean, all college kids make mistakes in life. Everybody makes a mistake at once at one point in their life. I don't think we should be judged for that one mistake we make. Yeah, it wasn't a great decision on his part, but nonetheless, he still made that decision. Um, but he did a, he did a great job of you know hey this is where we're at, um, you know and. Coach Mike Gundy, he's been in Oklahoma State forever. He's, you know, an, a phenomenal coach. Uh, drove me nuts when I was a kid having to go play Oklahoma State because of how good they were. Obviously, we saw him in the Alamo Bowl back in 2016. D- definitely did not go our way. You know, Coach Mike uh, McIntyre did a great job. But, you know, that was our first time at a bowl game in quite some time. It, it had been a minute. I don't think I'd ever – I've seen – I've been fortunate – enough to see two Colorado Bowl games in my lifetime that I can remember. Um, Obviously, the Alamo Bowl was both of them. One against Texas, didn't go so well. One against Oklahoma State, obviously, I just referred, didn't go so well. So that game is going to be one that I really want back. I want that game back. Um, But, you know, and Dion referred to the team. Obviously, they were picked to finish 11th in the Big 12, which it kind of makes no sense to me because we had Travis Hunter and Shadur Sanders both fin- picked to finish first team all Big 12 in the preseason. So that makes really no sense to me. How are you going to have a team that finishes 11th also have two players on your all Big 12 team? But you know what? I think you just let them keep doubting us. I think uh, the next segment we're going to talk about here in a second, we're going to go to a little bit of a break, uh, is going to be kind of a something that we need to we need to refer to for sure um so when we come back we will talk the new look offensive line of the colorado buffaloes i'm also going to get something to fix my hair because my hair is atrocious when we come back on the shoulder to shoulder pod jace hinton and he's kind of the do all guy jace hinton jace welcome to the ballpark brother we started talking like sports sports and jace is on fire. I know. 
Jace Hinton, and he's kind of the do all guy. Jace Hinton, Jace, welcome to the ballpark, brother. We started talking like sports, sports, and Jace is on fire. I know. Jace Hinton. Jace Hinton, and he's kind of the do all guy. Jace Hinton, Jace, welcome to the ballpark, brother. We started talking like sports, sports, and Jace is on fire. I know. Hello and welcome back to the Shoulder to Shoulder Pod, hosted by your boy Jace. Um, yes, I'm working on other commercials. Got some deals that I got to work out. Uh, I also had to get something to fix my hair because my hair was atrocious. The fact that nobody told me that is just sad. That's okay. Here we are back on the Shoulder to Shoulder Podcast. Now we're going to talk new look offensive line. Obviously, and defensive line is another one that we could talk about, but I think we're going to save that for another segment, but we're going to talk offensive line. Shadur Sanders, one of the most sacked quarterbacks in college football last year, sacked 56 times, I believe, but still put up the great numbers that he put up. And Shadur referred to that at Big 12 Media Day. He was like, you know, a lot of people criticized me for that. And he stated, you know, what? let them go get sacked 56 times. They're not even getting sacked that many times. They're still not putting up the numbers I'm putting up. Um, you know, this is great. I love the way Shadur competes. He's a competitor. A lot of people don't like it. I really love it. I love to see the fire. I love to see the energy energy from Shadur. And <clears throat> this new offensive line has made it a mission. They have the new saying, don't touch two. Um, talking about, you know, hey, we got to keep Shadur upright. You know, when you keep Shadur upright, we are able to see kind of what he's capable of. And one of those things is what he did against Colorado State, what he did against Nebraska, what he did against ASU, what he did ASU, and even then he was getting sacked a lot. Yeah, we started three and zero. Personally, I didn't think we were going to do that. Um, I figured we'd lost one of those games. Super thrilled we started three and zero, and then obviously we know how the rest of the season went, which we'll talk about that. In the next segment on the season predictions, as you see below, that's something we will be talking about. Um, well, let's just look at the offensive line. And this is my personal thoughts on how we're going to shape up. I think Jordan Seaton, standing at six foot five, 285 pounds, true freshman at IMG. Obviously, he was the highest recruited player that Colorado had had in a while to commit to us. He committed on... Uh, the show with Michael Irvin, Skip Bayless. Uh, what is that show called? Undisputed, maybe. I don't. I don't really know. I don't want to um, throw out the wrong show. But he committed on there. Super huge move for the Buffs to go out and get that guy. Um, so I think he'll start at left tackle for us. Um, left guard. You're gonna see Tyler Brown. Probably he's. Um, you know, former third team FCS All American for Coach Sanders at um, Jackson State, and he was ineligible last year. And you know, Coach Prime super hot, talked super highly of this kid. So does Shadur, and Shadur has a rep with him. So you know, it's going to be good to see there. Um, you could also see Kareem Hayden Harden, excuse me, that's a senior, played eleven games last year. Um. You know, he kicked inside the guard where he was at tackle last year. So you could see him a little bit even now, every now and then. I think also at left tackle, depending on how it goes, you could see Philip Houston. Um, he's a junior, started at, he's from FIU, uh, Florida International. Shout out Coach McIntyre there at FIU. Um, I think you could see him possibly in there too occasionally um for the buffs if jordan isn't you know performing at left tackle i think left guards on lock though for uh tyler tyler brown i think that's gonna be your your uh guard um the guy snapping the football coach prime talked about that it's gonna be like it's it's kind of a battle he's kind of battling it out between two guys zelene's zelene which is the six foot three 285 pound sophomore um, from Cherry Creek High School, you know, obviously a Colorado kid, love to see that. And then you also have Yakari Walker, who came over from UConn. So you kind of have the experience, and then you have the young in. So you could kind of, 
mix and match there. I feel like, you know, coach prime alluded that it's still a battle there, but the other parts that I'm kind of talking about have kind of already been locked with Seton and Brown. Um, right. Tyler Brown. Yeah. Jordan Seton, Tyler Brown at the left and uh, left tackle, left guard situation on the right side. You're going to see probably Justin Mayers, uh graduate transfer chose Colorado over, Mississippi State, Pitt, South Carolina, Texas Tech, and others. Uh, he started at UTEP. A lot of people are kind of thinking, I think right guard's going to be a battle. I think, I personally think that you're going to see mayors just because there's a certain, like, repu- not reputation, but rapport with Shador and mayors. Whereas we got Tyler Johnson from Houston, so you could see him as well. I think that kind of position is still a um, battle to have. Obviously, Johnson's 6'5", 325, so you're going to kind of see him battling in there a little bit. Um, I'd like to see what Johnson looks like. I'd also like to see what Mayers looks like. But I think ultimately it's going to come down to, okay, who's going to do the job in the trenches? And obviously the trenches was a big uh, uh, point for Coach Prime and making sure that our boy uh, Shador Shador is protected. You know, that's a big thing because once he is, you you know, everybody can see what he's been able to do around the country. Uh, Right tackle, I feel like this one is another one that is kind of – so the right side of the line is going to be a battle and the left side of the line is kind of already taken care of, you know. Uh, it's funny how that works, but um, I think the right side of the line, you're going to see either Khalil Benson out of Indiana or Wyatt Hummel out of Villanova. And here's the thing, Khalil Benson, these guys, everybody at Colorado is talking about it. They talk about him all the time. Shiloh, Shador, um, Bucky, Dion, um, or Coach Prime, they all talk about him. And they all say the same thing. That guy is ready to fight wherever he is. So he's going to be more than likely your right tackle, especially protecting that side that you can see. You're going to have Seton protecting Shadur's blind side. Shadur can see that side, and if he doesn't have to worry about that side, he's going to be just fine. As long as the blind side is protected, uh, you know, you let Shadur kind of give him that open reign of do what you got to do and kind of go from there. So that kind of puts us in a good spot. Um, there's obviously a lot of other transfers, you know, Amarion Miller can help out Will Shepard. Obviously, Amarion was with us last year. LaJonte Wester. But, you know, we're talking offensive line. The offensive line was a huge note for Coach Prime. You got to protect Shador. Obviously, we'll talk defensive line next week. But you got to protect Shador. If you don't protect Shador, you're going to have a problem. And that's not something you want. You don't want him hurt. We saw you know, how well he can perform when he's healthy. You protect him. You're not going to have, you know, he still put up all those numbers and he missed half of the Oregon State game and then the entire Utah game. He still had some of the highest numbers in the FBS. I mean, he's obviously going to be, in my opinion, he should be a top two pick. In my opinion, he should be a top five pick, no doubt. A little bias, obviously, because I'm a buff. But Shadur has obviously been able to put up great numbers since he came to Colorado, and he was still doing it when he was at Jackson State. It's not like anything's changed. He was doing put up putting up great numbers then too. When we come back, we'll take another little break. I do apologize; you got to watch my intro video a couple more times. Um, we'll come back and we'll talk season predictions of the Buffs. You're listening to the Shoulder to Shoulder Podcast. Jason. Jace Hinton, and he's kind of the do-all guy. Jace Hinton, Jace, welcome to the ballpark, brother. We started talking like sports, sports, and Jace is on fire. I know. Jason. Jace Hinton, and he's kind of the do-all guy. Jace Hinton, Jace, welcome to the ballpark, brother. We started talking like sports, sports, and Jace is on fire. I know. Jason. Jace Hinton. And he's kind of the do all guy. Jace Hinton, Jace, welcome to the ballpark, brother. We started talking like sports, sports, and Jace is on fire. I know. We are six Saturdays away from the college football season, but the Buffs don't play on a Saturday, which is actually kind of sad. 
Um, for those of you that know me, I am a sports information assistant, something like that, at New Mexico Highlands University. And our first football game for the Cowboys, which check out the Yeehaw podcast. That's going to be something coming on a little later, probably today. I think I'm going to release an episode today as well. Um, we play the same day as the Buffs uh, take on Eastern New Mexico Greyhounds. The Buffs open up their season. We're going to do some season predictions. Um, once again, I'll work on getting some commercials. It might be just like little clips from a video or a whole video that I have made on YouTube. Make sure you check out the YouTube at JMH Media Co. And also on Instagram at JMH Media Co. for all the updates. Uh, feel free to follow me too. Jace Hinton, J-A-C-E Hinton, H-I-N-T-O-N. C O on Instagram. Now, prediction time. Okay. So the Buffs open up with FCS Powerhouse North Dakota State. Coach Prime jokingly said that he's mad at Rick George, athletic director at the University of Colorado, for scheduling this one. Like, he couldn't give me a layup to open up Big 12 play. No, coach. We couldn't because we scheduled this game like 10 years ago. Our bad. Anyways, North Dakota State. It's in Boulder. 6 p.m., ESPN, prime time, prime for prime time. I mean, come on. doesn't get any better than that. A lot of people are saying this is going to be a close game. It will be a close game. If you're a betting person, I don't know if you are. I am 21, so I can legally talk betting now. Thank you, birthdays. Um, if you're a betting person, I would take the spread. I would say North Dakota State covers. Um, obviously when we get closer to the game, I'll talk more in depth about, oh, well, this is how they match up against the buffs, blah, 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 blah. Um, North Dakota state. I take that game. It's a win for the buffs. It's going to be close. Though. Not going to be a blow. If it is a blowout, holy cow, I'm going to be amazed, but it's going to be close. Um, so the buffs beat the bison. <laughs> it's funny. You got the, the, the same thing though. I mean, something like that. Anyways, Next is Knowledge University. Once again, if you weren't listening earlier, you're just joining. Uh, Nebraska is Knowledge U. I will refer to them as that forever and always. Dylan Riola, the question for Nebraska, who's going to be starting at quarterback? Is it going to be Dylan Riola? Respect for Matt Rule. I don't say this a lot about, a lot of nice things about the uh, Knowledge U, but Matt Rule, I respect him. I love what he did at Temple, what he did at Baylor. Obviously, he took the jump to the NFL. Didn't work out. Not entirely his fault. I mean, he was in Carolina, and Carolina is kind of a mess right now. Um, I mean, seriously, he had the back-to-back picks pretty much first overall two years in a row, but you traded with the Bears, DJ Moore, that whole trade. Anyways, um, that's in Lincoln on NBC. Whew, this hurts. Um, as a diehard, I want to say we win this game. But the question for us is going to be, who's at quarterback for Nebraska? If it's Riola, it's going to be a shootout. But I think it's going to come down to who has the football last. I'm going to say we win that game, but close. It's close. We I could see us losing that game too. But um, I can't bring myself to say that out loud, which is bad business, I know. But I, I think we can go into Lincoln and pull that one out. Uh, Colorado State, I think we win that game. I, no questions about it. I think last year when they came into our house and did what they did, I think that left a bad taste in a lot of these players' mouths, including Shador's and Shiloh's and obviously Travis Hunter, the whole Henry Blackburn thing that went down last year. Um, and then Jay Norvell, he poked the bear with the whole you know sunglasses and hat ordeal. So I think that game the buffs are going to be fired up for. Coming off of the Nebraska game, if we can win that, yeah. That And if we lose that, it's going to be even worse for Colorado State. I think we come out, and I think we win that one. I don't I don't want to say it's going to be a big, you know, big, big blowout, because I don't think it will be. Um, it's Colorado State. I mean, I said this last year. A lot of those that who know me really well know that I said this last year that you can't ever say, okay, it's going to be a blowout in that game, because it's not. It, it never has been. And if it is, it's usually when we're pretty bad or they're really bad. I mean, the two teams are terrible, and it's a blowout. It's weird. I don't... Never understood it. 
So right now I have us going three and zero to start the year until we get into Pac-12 play, where or Big Twelve. Whoa, that was crazy! I just said the Pac-12 play. Oh, we don't play in the Pac-12. We play in the Big Twelve. This is where things get interesting. Um, Baylor's at home, homecoming. I think that's going to be a big one. It's going to be packed house. The Buffs wear white that game, uh, so you wear all white if you're going to be at that game. I think we win that game. I think it's a shootout. And yes, you can say I'm biased all you want. I don't care. Go ahead and say it. That's fine. Say I'm biased. Um, I'm calling it how I feel. I see it. Um, don't worry. We're going to get into the games. It's like hard to, you know, say we win. Uh, Central Florida talked about that game. It's going to be a big one on September 28th in Orlando. It's going to be the, you know, battle of the black and gold teams. Um, I'm going to say we win that one just because we are going to go into it. I think we're going to be on a roll, and I think we're going to be looking good. As long as Shadour is staying upright in most of these games, I think we're going to be okay. So these next couple games are ones that are hard. Um, Kansas State, I think we lose that game. I think we lose that game because Kansas State is a respectable program. They have done lots of good there at Kansas State. So I do, I do think we lose that game. Um, U of A at Tucson, they lost their head coach to the Washington job who the Washington coach, Kendall DeBoer took the Alabama job, but they kept a lot of their players. That's going to be a shootout for the purpose of this though. I'm going to give us the win because there's some other games that I feel like are definite losses. Uh, Cincinnati comes to town. I think we win that game. Cincinnati's kind of been, little wishy-washy. That game is going to be nationally televised, too. Uh, we go to Lubbock and take on Texas Tech. That's going to be a big game. Joey McGuire, obviously, really close with Dion. I think we win that game. So, right now, we are currently, I had to write this down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight and one heading into, uh, I believe, yeah, I talked about Texas Tech. Heading into Utah, which I think is going to be a loss. I think we lose to Utah. Utah, Cam Rising is coming back. I'm not a big fan of Utah. I really don't like Utah. Um, that's not a that's not a secret. It's really not. Um, I have family that are Utah alums. Love y'all, though. I love that fam- side of the family. And I really don't have a problem with Kyle Whittingham. I think it's just Utah. They've always been kind of a thorn in our side since we entered the Pac-12, and now they're coming with us to the Big 12. Um so I will take Utah over BYU. I will do that. Um, rather be dead than red any day of my life, but uh, take Utah over BYU any day of the week. And if you know, you know. Um, so right now we're sitting at eight and two. Following that game at home, we go to uh, Lawrence, Kansas. Take on Kansas, but that game is going to be at Arrowhead, um, home of the Chiefs, and it's I know it's going to be a packed house. Kansas, is it Jalen Daniels? Jalen Daniels. And then Kobe Bryant, the DB. Th- those guys are phenomenal. You, know, you can't take the credit away. That head coach, uh, Lance Leipold, I think is that head coach there. That guy's phenomenal. Great coach. Has done really, really well uh, there at Kansas. I'm going to take a loss on that one. That one hurts to say out loud. And then we go to OK State. I think we lose that game too. So I have the Buffs finishing eight and four. Probably not good enough for the playoff. Um, obviously, it is the twelve team format this season. But I do have the Buffs uh, finishing eight and four. A lot of people don't like that. I personally I hate to be this way. Don't care. Um, I think that that's going to be. I think that's realistic for us. I think it is um, for the season. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of moving parts this year. Do we make the Big 12 championship? I don't know. I don't think so. Not with an eight and four record. We do make a bowl game. Um, I think it'd be cool if the Buffs made the uh, Gin and Juice Bowl. I think that'd be fun. Uh, you know, Snoop, uh, Uncle Snoop's going to be trying to get them Buffs in there. But uh, I think that uh, eight and four is a solid season prediction. I could see us going six and six too. Obviously, there was a couple games in there that I alluded to that was like, ooh, okay, you know. Um, you know, it's uh, it's tough. It's tough. It's kind of uh, toss-up games in there. Nebraska's one of those. Baylor's one of those. I feel like um, Central Florida's one of those. Uh, U of A is one of those. I feel like this whole schedule, I love that we're back in the Big 12. 
but the Big 12 is one of the hardest conferences in the country, and that's without a doubt. Um, so I appreciate you all tuning in. Those of you that tuned in to the Shoulder to Shoulder podcast, the first official episode of this where we talk all Buffs things. Obviously, today was football heavy because let's – EA CFB 25 drop week. I mean, come on. How can you not talk about that? Um, you know, so huge shout out. We'll get some more like little clips for commercials so you guys don't have to watch the intro every single time. Uh, you know, maybe some clips of, you know, highlights from, you know, a sport or whatever um, at CU, an interview or something, you know, uh, maybe a past podcast where I talk things. Um, so we'll get those all figured out for you guys, but we do appreciate you all tuning in here to the shoulder to shoulder podcast um next week just so you guys kind of have an idea we're gonna talk the defensive side of the football and all things that um come with that trevor woods shiloh sanders uh the defensive line and uh some other hidden content that we'll be bringing along to you guys so we will see you all next week once again we appreciate you listening I am Jace Hinton, your host of the Shoulder to Shoulder Pod, and Scobuffs as always.